All right, now I have finished with easygift.com maker. I have outputted the timing on the animation I like. I gave a little bit of a pause, you know, with the hat up so that you can get a sense of the reveal. The only one I had to keep moving pretty fast was when the flames are going so the flames don't look like they're frozen in space. But that kind of works because if something's on fire, you want to put it out pretty quickly. Good. So now I've outputted that. I've saved it as a GIF and as an MP4. The MP4 is for my own portfolio. So I've marked it as gray. The GIF I'm going to use, this was my old one, is this newest one. And if I just open it up on my Mac with a double click, it will open in preview and it doesn't animate. Instead, it shows me this whole stack of 33 frames because that's exactly what this is. A GIF is just a stack of pretty low resolution, 256 colors, maximum images. What makes an animated GIF work is there is a, an animation script written on top of that code for the pixels that when viewed in a browser, any kind of web browser, like I'll, I'll, use, I'll use Chrome, but it will play automatically. And there's also code in there to have it play only once or to have it play three times or to have it play in a loop endlessly. And the default is to have it to play, play endlessly. So this will be an endless loop whenever it's viewed in a web browser. Problem is you can't post this to Instagram because GIFs aren't supported as an animation script in Instagram. But what is supported in social media like Facebook, Instagram, MP4. So that's what you would use this file for, right? All right. Now I post that to my assignment in Canvas, and I do not post the MP4, I post the GIF. And I'm going to pretend it's a resubmission, because my first one was, was five frames per second everywhere. This one is now more customized. And because GIFs take a little while to load that full stack, whenever they start loading, they look like they're delaying a little bit. But once it fully loads, just like a web page, you'll see everything clearly. So if I see these side by side, I like the one on the right a little bit better because it's not quite so hurried. All right, now I need my next requirement, which is the refined storyboard. So to get that, I need to go back to my assignment files and I need to go to my stage file and open that up in PhotoP. I no longer need my assets file. That is done. My stage file is basically my full resolution, full millions of colors flip book of my animation, right? And to change a page, all I do is turn off these eyeballs. Agreed? It's a flip book. Now, what I need to do is tear out nine pages of that flipbook and lay them out to be a tight three by three grid. Or if you wanted to do more than three, you could do like a three by four grid. I wouldn't do more than that. Otherwise, when you print it, each frame is going to be way too small. So how do we control layout? Well, the first thing to do is to use your rulers to make guides. Layout digitally is all about using guides and grids. So you can see my rulers and I'm going to use my move tool and I'm going to click on the ruler and drag down a guide and it's going to stick to the edge of my frame. And I do that on all four sides. Remember I used guides on my assets to, to center my my shapes, but I hadn't used them on the stage yet. Now I have them on the stage. Next, what I'm going to do is use the crop tool. This is pretty important, especially in PhotoP, to make sure I don't have any like smart objects or anything else floating around this so that my 
animation is cleanly cut out into this shape, preferably a square. But if it's not a square, it can still be worked with. Okay, next I'm going to check my image size. And I want it to be 800 by 800 pixels, which is the same as 8 inches by 8 inches at 100 pixels per inch. So all that's good. Now, what I can do is go to image canvas size. And this is the key to doing layout in Photo P or Photoshop instead of using InDesign or some layout program. You have to grow from the middle. If you ever want something centered on a page, a poster, ad campaign, a flyer, a business card, if you ever want it centered on the thing you're printing on, you have to grow the canvas from the center out. So I go to canvas size and I'm going to change it from 8 by 8 inches to 30 inches wide by 40 inches tall. And if that sounds familiar, that's because that's the largest paper size you can use in a professional four color offset lithography press. And then I hit command zero, I fit it all on screen. It looks like my animation storyboard, like flipbook, is now floating on a table, right in the middle of a table. I like to think of it like a Las Vegas card shark table. And now the deck of cards is in the middle of the table and there's a gray gingham tablecloth. And I don't like looking at that gray gingham tablecloth, even though it just means empty space. I'm going to set the table by creating a new blank layer at the bottom, putting it behind every other layer, and then edit fill. I'm going to drape it with a 100% white normal tablecloth. Okay. Now the problem is my animation has a white background. That's only a problem because it's hard to see where the edges of my animation are. So I might even turn that off and then turn it back on at the beginning. But I'm going to leave it on for now because the next step in layout is I need even column widths in what's called a gutter. So the gutter for a storyboard is the space in between the panels. And we want this to be an even inch all the way around. Otherwise, we just have our panels stacked up on top of our panels. So I do this with guides, and I use these pixel counts on the rulers, but it's really hard to see them and to get accurate count without first turning on your grid. So if you go to View and Show, you can also turn on your grid. Now my problem with Photop, and I understand why they do this, but they don't allow you to change your ruler settings to inches because they, they operate in a lot of countries, right? So they just keep it at pixels. So what you need to do is zoom in, see where your guide is, bring a new guide there, and it will tell you how many pixels that is. And because we're at 100 pixels per inch, to make it one inch on each side, I need to add 100 to this. So it's going to go from 1900 to 2000. And it's going to stick to that guide. And if I'm zoomed in at 200%, you can count one, two, three, four, five grid squares. So I'm going to move my guides five grid squares. And it's tough because I have a white background, right? But I'm going to move it five grid squares from the top. So one, two, three, four, five. That's 100 pixels. Five grid squares to the left. One, two, three, four, five. 1,000 pixels, and five grid squares, zoomed in at 200%, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to the bottom. Really hard to see, and this really hurts my eyes. So I'm going to turn on that tablecloth, and then I'm going to hit Command apostrophe to turn off the grid. And now you can see I have an even inch border all the way around my, my animation frames. I know what my first animation frame is. I can mark it green by right-clicking where the eyeball is. And now I'm going to use the Move tool. I'm going to turn off Auto Select, and I'm going to move that first animation frame into place. And you see where the red lines are? That means it's 
framed in. And because I have a white background, it might help just to turn that off because this gives me a nice little nest, like one of those game boxes that has all the cards separated into nice compartments. I've made compartments for each of my keyframes now. So how do I choose my nine frames? Well, I look at my storyboard sketch and I see, well, the first thing that happens on that first row is that the hands come in. So let me take maybe this layer and that's my next frame. Then what happens? The hat gets pulled down. So I skip a few frames forward. That's too far. Turn that one off. Maybe this one. Maybe that's too far. Maybe this one. There we go. Bum, bum, bum. But if you actually look at it, this is where it reveals that there are bytes taken out. So I'm actually going to change it so that this one isn't the one I use. This is all about storytelling. Sorry. This one isn't the one I use. And this one I use as my second frame. And then my third frame is all the way down. Oops, didn't want to do that. Whoops. It's not about, it's exactly an inch. Layout has to be exact because layout is working with printers. It's working with whole publications. It's working, working with magazines, with uh, the dimensions of bus ads and billboards. So layout is really finicky and exact. So you want to do 100 pixels, which at 100 pixels per inch is one inch. How did I get these holes in it? I think it's a glitch, but it shouldn't matter. Okay, so those are going to be my first three frames. Then I got to reveal what happens next. So this is going to be my center frame. So I'm going to mark that with orange. And then what comes before it, it's going to be one of these frames. Either that one or this one. Yeah, I like the other one better. So you turn on and off the ones you want, but you got to put them in the right position. And I'm actually wondering if this one should be the one before it. Like that. Okay. Now I'm going to go out from the middle. And the easiest way to do this is to turn off every layer at the middle. Because now I'm going to be dealing from the top of the deck, whereas before the middle, I was dealing from the bottom of the deck. But now I know where my middle is. And remember, beginning, middle, and end. I have a lot of layers, a lot of frames. There we go. So it reveals the mustache with the bites taken out of it. Now the hat goes down again. And I'm varying it just slightly from my storyboard. And I'm going to go right to pulling it down here and moving that frame to here. And now it's going to get pulled down all the way. In fact, I'm just going to use this one. So this is where you have to be a, a director and figure out your storytelling. I'm going to use this one next. And then I'm going to use this one. Oh, but that's too similar. Let's see. I'm going to use this one. And then it's going to reveal the clean shaven. Right there. 
and then it's going to have the little twinkles.